Hello, my name is Gary Forrester and uh, my mentor is Dr. Martina Art from the Physics Department. My project is entitled Solar Observations During a Solar Minimum Using the Small Radio Telescope. The goals of this project were to study the radio emission from the sun using the small radio telescope during our current solar minimum and correlate that radio emission with x-ray emission that we obtained from the NOAA. Um, in order to see any x-ray or radio emission from the sun, we need to observe active regions. Um, active regions on the sun are locations where there are high strength magnetic fields, there's lots of moving plasma, and there's a lot of built up energy in these active regions. And that's a recipe for solar flares. And uh, the, pictures to, the picture to your left is a picture of the sun in 2002 at solar maximum when there's a lot of active regions, a lot of cool stuff going on. And the picture to the right is a picture of the sun about two weeks ago when there's not a lot going on, so not a lot of active regions, so it's rare to see any radio or x-ray events. Um, here is a close-up of an active region. Um, you can see the magnetic fields, magnetic field lines coming out of the sun, and the two bright spots on the surface are footprints. And uh, just for a sense of size, that little circle in the middle is the Earth at this, at this uh, scale. So these things are really huge. And uh, solar flares are um, where we really want, what we really want to see. And uh, solar flare is the sudden release of all the built up energy in these active regions and they release an enormous amount of energy. Um, now I'm going to talk about the mechanisms that cause radio and x-ray emission. Um, gyrosynchrotron radiation causes radio emission and all it is is charged particles and electrons rotating around magnetic field lines that you saw in the other picture. And uh, non-thermal bremsstrahlung causes x-ray emission and it's caused by non-relativistic electrons. That means they're not going to fast. And other charged particles that hit the solar surface. Um, the small radio telescope is how we monitor, how we monitor the radio emission from the sun. It's a 2.3 meter dish, which is about seven feet wide. And it's housed on the roof of the science building here at Victoria State. It was developed at MIT's Haystack Observatory. And it measures radio emission in the L band, which happens to include this one centimeter hydrogen emission line, which is important because hydrogen is the most abundant um, element in the galaxy. So, I mean, in the universe. So we use it to uh, look at the structures of galaxies in our universe. Now, to monitor X-rays, we have to use satellites because X-rays don't penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. And the NOAA has um, a GOES satellite program, and GOES 10 measures X-ray flux from the sun in the 0.1 to 0.8 nanometer range. And they are in uh, these satellites are in geosynchronous orbit, which means they're on a fixed point around the Earth, and they rotate the same rate the Earth as the Earth. And uh, they're also capable of measuring the magnetic field on the sun and um, the flux of high energy particles coming out of the sun. And now why we would see a connection between radio and x-ray emission. Um, at first glance you would think that we probably wouldn't because x-ray emission is about a million times more energetic than radio emission. So we would think the me mechanisms for each one wouldn't really be connected to each other, one or other, but uh, studies have shown that um, they do. And what they've found is that gyrosynchrotron radiation and non-thermal brems from light um, use the same distribution of electrons and charged particles, which basically means the same electron that's rotating around magnetic field lines to cause radio emission also hits the solar surface and causes X-ray emission. And this is what we found. Um, we did 33 days of good observations. Um, we had five days where we only saw radio events, five days where we only saw x-ray events, and 11 days where we saw both radio and x-ray events. And out of those 11 days, we only found one where there is a definite connection. 
Uh, we observed one C-class solar flare, which is a lower energy solar flare, and there is a small color correlation, and uh, it was similar to other observations done at uh, Haystack Observatory. And here's a graph of that solar flare. Um, the green there is radio waves, and the red and blue are the different wavelengths in X-ray. And you can see the small peak in radio just before the peak in X-ray, which was similar to Haystack Observatory's results with the SRT. And uh, you see extended radio emission, um, and that's because of electrons. When the electrons and charged particles hit the solar surface, um, they excite more charged particles and they get kicked up and they get caught by the magnetic field, cause more X-ray and radio emission, which is why you see the slow decay there. And uh, it's pretty much what we expected. We didn't expect to see a lot of solar flares because it's a solar minimum, and uh, we were actually lucky to see even one. And so we were glad to get at least one connection between the two. And uh, as I said before, this experiment was done at Haystack with uh, similar results. They almost had the same exact graph that we had. And uh, for the other days that we only saw radio and the, only, the days we only saw x-ray events, um, there are just a lot of different mechanisms that cause radio and x-ray emission. And these processes are probably the source of all of the other solar events that we saw. Um, significance of the project is that um, we see this uh, correlation between radio and x-ray emission in other places in our universe. And um, the sun is our closest star, so it's easy to look at. So we can study these different processes on our star and apply them to other celestial objects. Um, most notably, pulsars. And pulsars are rotating neutron stars. And uh, neutron stars are really cool because they're like failed black holes. They go supernova and then they get really dense. And uh, they rotate and look like they're pulsing. That's what they call pulsars. <laughs> And uh, in conclusion, uh, we went out, we tried to find a connection between radio and x-ray emission. And we found one instance where there was, which is pretty much we, what we expected. And um, to make a definitive conclusion, we need to take more data points. And it's probably a lot easier in the solar maximum, which will be in two or three years, I think. Um, and then they can observe a lot of solar flares. and perhaps make a connection between the type of flare and the radio emission. Um, but uh, other than that, we learned a lot about the small radio telescope and how it works and uh, all the intricacies of it. And uh, uh, found out that it's capable of making good astronomical observations for undergraduate research.